It's me, Erin. Thanks for joining us on the More Love Podcast. Do not tell Rebecca, but this podcast is about empathy. She likes people to think she's dead inside, but the truth is she's a big time feeler who has truly helped me uncover that empathy is my superpower. Here she comes. Hey, bestie. Hi, love. What are you doing? Oh, just getting ready to host a podcast. A podcast? About what? A life. Our life as best friends who are more like sisters. Ah, yay! I love us and I can't wait to share our stories with the world. Especially the ones that involve us pushing each other, right? To be our most authentic selves. Oh, man. Okay. Does that incense smell like pizza? No. All I smell is pizza. It's probably your armpits. And I <laughs> love it. That I'm over here like, like we're at Salvatore's. That must I... be your fat bastard. Oh, is it? Let me smell. It is. It is. I thought it was the incense. I can't. I, I thought can't. it was the incense. That's really What is funny. the incense today? Um, sea salt. Ocean. Oh. Mm-hmm. We should go to the ocean. I know. It's so freaking cold. We need cold some out. ocean. It's so cold. Well, we are going to be going. A couple weeks. Yes, we are. A couple weeks. I can't wait. I, I know. got my sweater. Going on your first cruise. I know. I'm a little scared. You are? I'm what are you scared, scared about? I'm looking up at the boat and thinking we're going to be on that shit. Oh. That's, that's the scariest part. What ship are you going on? Oh, no clue. I don't even know where we're going. The, the best what part is... What cruise line is it? Well, I, I don't know. know. <laughs> I know where we're supposed to... I know what port we're supposed to go to. Wow. I don't know. Yeah. It's in Florida somewhere. You know, we're going to Disney before that's we all go great. there. <laughs> be, yeah. Oh, by the way, I, I Sawyer and I had to wait at soccer for Taylor. We had 30 minutes to blow off and you can't really go anywhere in 30 minutes. So I go, Sawyer, let's watch the um, fireworks show that Aaron and I didn't see. <laughs> And I almost texted it to you. And then I go, that was, still wasn't good. And then I went back like five years when the Elsa lit oh, it up. Yeah. Mind blowing. It was awesome. Yeah. Yeah. They're cheaping out. They're not doing it anymore. Yeah. Well, it's because they had that new CEO for a while and he uh-huh. totally tanked everything. Well, and then they got rid of him. And now we're back to business. However, when we do go, there's no rules. What does that mean? There's no more make res. We can go to the, we can go to all four parks on one day. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And I thought you meant like... If for you and me. I didn't think oh, well, there's no rules for ever I'm for like, that. I'm like, do we ever have rules? Or? No, but we are definitely going to Epcot because it's the Flower and Garden Festival. Yes, I've never been there for that. Okay. You know, I'm just going to say, look at the All I want is that pretzel with the beer cheese. Oh, yeah. We can get that. You know what we're not getting? The fry flight. Because <laughs> it, it tastes like B.O. Uh-huh. Smells. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We are going on a roller coaster. No. Oh. Well, then you're, you're going to wait for me at the I'm end. I'm wait for you. <laughs> I'll wait for you. It, it's a small world after all. <laughs> yeah, so we're going on a cruise. Yep. We're going on a cruise, and we have no clue what cruise line or where it is. We don't care. I don't even know where we're going. I don't even going. know where we're going. Labadee? I don't know. I mean, I'm Labadee. assuming. Labadee. Which port Labadee. are you leaving out of? Where are you flying into? Orlando. So you're leaving out of Port Canaveral. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't know how we're going to get there. I'm assuming we're going to Uber. Well, you're going to take an Uber? <clears throat> I, I, think we, I think we have a spot to stay before. I don't know. No, I did. I got that. You did? Because oh, that's Disney. I planned, I I planned I all that. Is it, I yeah. see. It's not Disney Cruise, is it? No. No. Oh. We do know that. No. no. You know what it's not. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. Although I would love a Disney Cruise. That'd be well, great. We don't care. No. It's going to be sunshine. Mm-hmm. You're really worried about being on the boat. Yeah. It's like a, float, it's a floating building. We're going to get on at like it's a really big building. floor number four. Right. And so you're going to walk the... Plank the gangway. Walk the plank. Right. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. You're going to walk in and I can't, I'm going to capture your initial response on video. It's going to be. Because you walk in and you're like, I'm in the middle of the biggest mall in the world. Right. It on does not the water. feel like you're on a ship at all. At all. Okay. Did you look and see if we got an exterior room? I got whatever you told me to get. But I hope I told you to get a balcony. <laughs> I'll have to look. I'll look. I'll You're look, gonna look it up. Yeah, but I won't. I'll just send it to you. I don't know what it is. But okay. Yeah. Did yeah. we pay for it already? Yep. Good. Oh, thank thank the, God. Paid the bill. Thank God. Although, you know, what we didn't get the drink package because that no. shit's expensive. No. And that's where they make their money. Scott. But here's know the worst part. The drink package. Yeah. I know. Rebecca. I know. But here's the problem. If the rule is whoever's staying in the room, everybody has to have the same package. All right. So. If I bought the drink package to the tune of like 500 and something dollars, you have to buy that. I know. That's ridiculous. It is. 
So instead, I bought my but flasks you know why that they look do like that? suntan lotion. For people mm-hmm. like us. <laughs> I did. You bought incognito flasks. Yeah, but I well, you haven't purchased them yet because it's going to yeah. be in my window to yeah. return them. Well, I noticed that you created an Amazon list. I did. For, very nice. I did. I really like what you got in I there did. so far. Thanks for inviting me to that yep. to that list. Yep. That's Well, again... We're not going to discuss it until it gets to the window. No, correct. Once once it's in the window of right. the time frame, which is still another two or three weeks, yeah. then we can move then forward. Then we can talk about it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because we have to be in our return window. That's right. Yes. That's right. Correct. Because you, know you know how we roll. Yes. Like, I'm right. never going to use that stuff again. Right. Right. And if I do, I'll just reorder it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I'm very excited for us to go on this cruise. I'm excited. It's your first cruise. I think you're going to love every second of it. I'm really excited it's paid for. I'm really excited to see the shows. Suck it up and deal. Suck it up and deal. I'll do the things that you want to do, minus the zip lining or anything scary like that. All I want to do is sit by the pool. Oh, it's fine. We'll do that all day, and then we'll go to the shows at night. Sit by the saltwater pool. I hate the shows so much. Why? <laughs> oh, they're so... Show. When was the last time you, you've seen a show on a, on a ship? Her? Uh, me? What's like that? me? Yeah. Um, it was a couple of months ago. Oh, what ship? It was bad. She don't know. I don't How know. do you fucking not know what <laughs> ship you're on? Wait, what does that what matter? Do you know how many times we go to the airport and we go up to the airline that we think we're on and they say, where's your layover? And we both look at each other. Does the ship matter? Yeah. It does? Oh, yeah. The cruise line matters. The ship matters. It the itinerary does? matters. Yes. Well, I mean, <clears throat> I mean, it depends. If all you're going to do is go and get drunk and lay by the pool, then no, it doesn't matter. Well, so this last time I went on a princess cruise, which is great because everyone on that cruise is over the age of seventy three. Yep. 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 And the best part about that is they ain't racing you. Yeah. To the, to sit by the pool. You know where they did race you? <laughs> to dinner. <laughs> no. Four nope. thirty. Nope. nope. To the ice cream hour. Oh, yeah. And they only had butter, oh, butter pecan. pecan. <laughs> it was butter pecan or maple walnut. <laughs> that was because that's my favorite ice cream. And so she immediately texted me when she would get service and be like, you're never going to believe it. <laughs> yeah. Guess what? <laughs> yep. Well, I worked 10 years in the cru- indus- cruise industry. So what? I- yes. Scott, say more about that. What do you mean? Worked, what did you do? I worked for Carnival Cruise Lines for 10 years. Oh, you're the party cruise. Yeah. Doing okay. what? Uh, video production. Now he was the main dancer. Yes. Yeah, here he was. The, that's why he's all. That's why he's all was, sensitive about the show. <laughs> I was a cruise director. <laughs> uh, can you imagine Scott as the cruise director? No. I mean, that's what I went to school for. So you went to school to be a cruise director. My master's is in recreation and leisure. <laughs> it's a real thing. You'd be a, you'd be a great first cruise all, director. Not, first of all, you're not British, so you can't be a cruise director now. Oh, why? <laughs> They're all British. Oh, or oh. Australian. Wow. You many, there. There's many I'm, people on my last cruise from South Africa. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. Mm. I think we're going on Royal Caribbean. Okay. Yeah, I think so too. But okay. I'm not a hundred percent sure. Yeah. yeah. Royal. That's Royal's good. a nice. It's a nice. You know, middle upper level experience. Yeah. Great. Carnival would have been great in our twenties. Yeah. yeah, I hear that's like the spring breaker. Yeah. Like. Yeah. College. We're not doing that anymore. Like Cancun. Yeah. No. Yeah. That would be Mm-mm. like that time we just talked about the other time where we went to the bar and only stayed for five minutes. Because we that's, couldn't handle it. That's carnival. Once yeah. you've seen behind the, the behind the scenes, behind the curtains, then it's just the, the magic's gone. Mm. And I'm not saying that there's anything bad necessarily uh, that happens, but it's just... You realize it's, I don't want, you know what? I don't want to take no, away your No, now fun. I need to know. I don't want to take away your fun. Now I need to know what, what magic like rats? is gone. Don't say there's rats. Oh God, no. Okay. Well, well I mean, no, I don't think there's I'm rats. I'm fascinated <laughs> by the morgue area. I want to see it. What? I want to see it. Wait. You know that they have, they have a morgue on every ship. They have a place where they place dead bodies because you never know who's going to go. You got to be prepared. They, they also have a brig. What's that? That's where they put people who need to be arrested. Oh, yeah. Like right. a jail? Sure, absolutely. Yeah, it's really just yeah, a You room. can't be causing chaos on the damn ship. You lock your ass up. <laughs> but, okay. I there's, mean, a, how, there's a show on Amazon Prime all about the yeah, ins and outs of cruises. I'm, t- I'm too afraid to watch it. I know. And all the food mm-hmm. and all of that stuff. But I mean, you're not at all fascinated or interested all in the morgue part. Is be super nice to the waiters and, and wait staff. Because those people what? 
work mm-hmm. like dogs. Mm-hmm. And oh. don't they live live basically on the ship? Yeah, all, all the crew does. But yeah. they, they work like 16-hour days mm-hmm. and day in, day out. They barely get any time off and they go out oh, what there are they for, gonna do? for eight to ten months at a time. Right. You know, right. and then they do like five contracts and go home and buy a house and retire. So, right, right. You know, to oh. Sri Lanka, wherever they're from. Mm-hmm. I mean, that sounds great. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> but it's a lot of work. Yeah, I mean, it's no joke. In a third world country. Well, sure. It depends which <laughs> which one. <laughs> but we already paid our paid our tips. Yeah, that's right. In advance. That's right. So that's oh, good. Oh, yeah. they do that now? You pay them in oh, advance? Yeah. I remember yeah. back in the day, you used to be like at the end of the cruise, you get the envelopes. Yeah. And they tell you, don't forget to take care. And then and no. each, each person gets this amount a day yeah. per person. Mm-hmm. Per, yeah. you know. they, right. they pre-calculate that. Yeah. Well, that's mm-hmm. good. Mm-hmm. But that just means that just means that the, that the cruise line is probably taking a, taking a piece of it. Mm. Probably. If it's going through their hands first. Maybe. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm, I'm not surprised. Bastards. Yeah. Why is this all in my face? I love that how that smells with my sandwich. Wow. I gotta move it over it's here. It's really nice. It's like there a complete go. pizza shop over here. That's and so I funny. love every second of it. That's really funny. So anyway, we're going on a cruise. We don't know the cruise line. We don't no. know we don't care. what time it leaves. We no. don't know when we're coming back. We don't know how long we're going. It's going to be great. Well, they keep changing my our flight schedule. Yeah. So right. I do get notifications about that. But the good news is we originally were taking a flight down there with a layover i just got an update we got a straight flight now great and we'll be getting in three hours earlier perfect yep more disney time we'll be sure to put all of the antics oh don't even worry on the oh you'll see it all interwebs speaking of antics yeah i oh go ahead sorry next time uh get me a ticket okay okay get me my own cabin it doesn't uh-huh. have i could be inside i could be down on the crew level i don't care okay I used to live in the crew cabin so they're small but oh, bring my, my camera okay. and i'll follow you around on the ship great and I work three hours a day. <laughs> Sounds That's like fine. my schedule. And actually, it's more than Rebecca works. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's totally fine. Sounds like my schedule. In fact, you can just give us your camera and we'll take a photos of ourselves. Yeah, it's fine. I, I, don't, I don't think that's a good idea. <laughs> I don't know um, why. But I have to bring my wife, too, because she's got to, you know, carry the batteries and whatnot. Oh, and she's fun. So yeah, that's yeah, fine. Right. We met her the yeah. other day. And she's she's She'll fit right in. <laughs> I love when she walked in and you're like, is that my wife? We're and like, we're like, we don't know. We have never met her before. I mean, might I don't know. be. It's she's, a lady. It looks like she knows what she's doing here and she's got a lab coat on. So she's either here for some real awkward reason because she's with the CDC or she's here because of you. And, in, and then she handed you a bunch of paperwork and an envelope and we were just hoping it wasn't divorce papers. So, with a you smile know. smile and we're joking around. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. I guess it's, it's fine. fine. Okay. Gotta go. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> oh my gosh. But speaking of shenanigans, I posted a poll yes. in our Facebook page because, you know, we're in the process of developing the show for the year and figuring out some some things that we want to do. And I thought, yeah, let's just ask the people. Yeah. Let's ask the people. So um poll the, the people. Poll the people. So yep. my favorite is um because I personally think us taking a class yeah. would be well, I know. Yeah. I know yeah. what it's going to be. A lot of experience. We've with taken that. many old classes, yeah. and every single person doesn't engage with the class. They just watch us, right? Every time, and we're not even doing it Remember to be the funny. Cake one. Oh, oh yeah. the cake one when the cake fell right on the floor. Right on the floor. <laughs> right. This girl. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we took cake decorating classes. We've taken, you know, the brainery. We've done numerous yeah. things. Um, but my favorite, my favorite all time story, and I said this to Lauren. She, mm-hmm. when she posted is that <laughs> right after I had Taylor, this was years ago, you were like, you need to get out of the house. I booked us some experiences and I'm like, well, okay. <laughs> they were <laughs> continuing ed classes at the high school, <laughs> but you booked us under random names and personalities, but you didn't tell me any of that. So when we get in <laughs> right before we walk in, you're like, you're blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, what? And she's like, you're going to see an attendance list and that's your name. And this is my name. And this is, you were a doctor. This is before you got your PhD. Oh my God. And then we had to act out those personas, but it was a voiceover acting class. Oh yeah. That and was we one had of to them. speak into, <laughs> speak yep. into microphones much like this. Yeah. Right. And yep. we had to be our personas and yep. keep straight faces. Yep. Yep. I, did you also go to the yoga class with me? No, it was a um, 
Wasn't it like yoga with trombones or something? I feel like yes. it was in the band room. It, it was, was in the, the band, band room. room. It was a meditation one. Oh, meditation. And I was pissed at you. I'm like, I got to sit here and be silent. Yeah. And then right. I was really triggered when they made us um, visualize a stream. And oh, I had just yeah. given birth. Yes. You know, yes. I piss myself all yep, the time. I know. It I know. was not good. I know. I love that I turned meditation mm-hmm. into yoga with trombones. <laughs> right, right. But it was just meditation in the band room. But I actually want to take that class. Yoga yeah. with trombones. I mean, Sounds I know. Sounds delicious and yeah. musically satisfying. Absolutely. Delicious. I like yogurt. Don't you like yogurt? Not yogurt. Yoga. yoga. Oh, I thought you said yogurt. <laughs> <laughs> yogurt. Dun, 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 dun. Eat your Slurp. yogurt. Dun, dun, it's not dun, good for dun, the dun, instrument dun. at all. <laughs> yeah, you have to eat it through the trombone. <laughs> oh my god, hilarious! But no, yeah, I mean, we've done a lot of those classes. Wait, I those know are it's great. It's quite funny. So personally, that would be fun. So people picked that one. They liked that. Some of them did. Yeah. Okay. Yep. But I what, love Allie, what, did, a, yeah. what did she say? Because you know, I all my go to phrase is nobody cares. That's right. So nobody cares. Yep. So she thought it would be great to have to a list things. to have a session yeah. where we talk about the things that nobody cares about. Right. And the list is long. Oh. So I'll just be real clear. Here we don't nobody cares about this, like right. this, like this. It just might be very validating for I, people to I know that you're nobody right. cares mm-hmm. about those things. I think you're right. You know what you know what um nobody picked? What? Movie review. I saw that. <laughs> I saw that. I saw that. All Nobody wants us to review like, a movie. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Everyone's mm-hmm. like, yeah, guess what? Still, still traumatized yep. by the whale. Yep. How about we don't want to watch any more of your movie picks? <laughs> what was the one you were going to pick? Something about sisters making cakes or something? What was that one? You were like, oh my gosh, oh, we got to yeah. watch No, this. not sisters. Um, Sitting in bars with cake. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. Right. So she's watching it. She's like, we got to sit down and watch this together. Not two hours later. Is she like, we're not watching that. <laughs> no, we're not watching it. I'm a mess. No, nope. this isn't OK. Nope. don't. I said, don't even turn it on. I'm like, you're bad. We're done the, with we're the not. movie reviews. No, so no one wants that. No, delete. Yeah. We'll just delete that one. Yeah. Right up. No, no one wants the movie reviews at all, though. Did uh, anyone of, I, yesterday? OK. Did anyone add anything? Oh, like I did. Right. OK. Mm-hmm. But I'm sure I'm sure some things will come up. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, you better let us know because yeah. otherwise we going rogue. We're going, I mean, we doing what we doing. That's right. So, do you remember the time that I told you I was going to the movies with my friend Stacy, and you said I like the movies? I'm going to go to. I do remember <laughs> that was last like a year ago. <laughs> we saw Eighty for Brady yeah. or whatever that movie was. Yep. Well, I had that to... was when we started singing One Bottle of Pop. Was it? Yes, because we we got there too early. And oh, we I had to sing teach you multiple around. rounds. I had to teach you a round. <laughs> yes. A round song. Yep. Well, I had to preface it with that because I couldn't just say, do you know my friend Stacy? Because mm-hmm. you'd be like, oh, you mean my friend Stacy too, <laughs> who I went to the movies with? Because I'm real clear. You said, what are you doing today? Mm-hmm. I said, I'm going to the movies with my friend Stacy. You said, I like the movies. What movie? Right. I said, 80 for Brady. Is I'm that like, the name of it? I don't yes. even know. I said, I want to see and it. And you said, I want to see that. What time is it? Mm-hmm. I said, you're not invited. And then you showed up. Do you remember? Yes. And then I had to say to Stacy, hi, Stacy. This is Rebecca. Um, she'll be coming to the movies with us. Why did it's she care? Fine. She loved it. Right. So much so. That she bought you something. No, she did not. Yes, she did. She bought you something. So uh, we went to like a New Year's uh, Eve thing. Her kids, um, her oh, yeah, kids the, and the Carter yeah, mm-hmm. and went there together. Mm-hmm. And so um, when I walked in to pick up Carter, she's like, I got this for Rebecca. Stop and it. I said, oh, my gosh, it's so perfect. Wait till you see this. Close your eyes. I got to show all the listeners first. Not like I can see it without my glasses. Good thing I brought them. Can I open? No, not yet. <sighs> Hilarious. Okay. Oh, wait. Scott's zooming in. <laughs> so funny. This is, could not be any more you. Her daughter was buying a bunch of stickers and it was like five for a dollar. And so she was, you got to get this one. You got to get this one. <laughs> okay, here you go. So she got you this sticker. What does it say? Dead inside, but it's Christmas. <laughs> oh, my God, I love this. <laughs> I'm going to have to keep it uh, and it, keep it from my daughter. She's going to steal it. It's a ghost <gasps> drinking an iced coffee. But it has hearts. Yeah. And it's pink. Dead inside, but it's Christmas. That, if that was not more, she sees you. She does she see me. She sees you. Oh, you know? Stacey. Yes. So Stacy got that for you. Thank you. Isn't that so sweet? Thank the you. I wonder if Stacey's Stacey full name is Anastasia, because that was going to be my name. 
Oh, it's so random. Mm-hmm. I don't think so. Oh. I, and if it was, I'm glad she went with Stacy. Why? <laughs> because she is not an Anastasia. Oh, yeah. That was my great grandmother's name. That was supposed to be my name until um, I was born in the hospital. And my dad said, nope. If your name was Anastasia, mm-hmm. I would come up with something else <laughs> real quick. I would not be calling you Anastasia. Well, it would be. I Anna. can't even say it that well, it many wouldn't times. be that long. I don't like Anna either. Mm. It's one of my favorite names, but it's fine. I was going to be Megan. Mm. That would have been easier Irish. than Anastasia. Mm. Oh my god, it's uncomfortable to even say it. <laughs> um, what was I saying? Something about Stacey. her stickers. Yeah. Oh, you know what else she did for our live show? What? She changed her background photo on Facebook to be information about our live. Stop it. She promoted the shit out of that thing. Isn't that amazing? We owe our money. People are amazing. We owe our money. Yeah, right. We made made a lot on that one. We made a lot. That's so nice. People are amazing. Our followers are really, really awesome. And we could not appreciate it more. So, yes. So, Stacy sees you. Mm -hmm. Why don't you start us off today? 20 minutes in to the 50 minute podcast with our intention. I would like one today. I'd like an intention for 2024. You mean this? Yeah. Tarot card? Okay. So um, (laughs) you already picked it? I did. Oh, because this was calling to me. But this is seems apropos for you. Okay. It's the page of pentacles and it's a what is that thing called? A warthog? Mm. With the with the. Yeah, I think so. The yeah, one, yeah, the one that remember, farts? Yes, because it's, remember, oh, I was an old war. Right, 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 yeah, right, yeah, right. Mr. Pig. Yeah, yes. good job, Scott. Yes. That was great. Yes, and I... Wow, that was, can we take a moment, Scott? No, that was on. right on. <laughs> Do it again, Scott. No, you gotta, you gotta start he, it. I was an old board hog. <laughs> now I can't do it. <laughs> Scott, that was incredible. Like you're about to get signed by Disney. Right, right. <laughs> do it one more time. Mr. Pig. <laughs> <laughs> That's great, Scott. Mm-hmm. Wow. That was good. Well, thank you for the reinforcement. That was Appreciate awesome. It. This also seems apropos because at seven o'clock this morning, I sent you both a, um, video about how if you don't find farts funny <laughs> what it says something about yeah if you don't find farts funny what was it i didn't watch it yet what <laughs> sorry it's hilarious in fact you should watch it right now scott what did it say something about if you don't find farts funny then you're a sad soul who still farts or something, <laughs> or something like that it was really funny <laughs> Remember when Scott's wife was here and Scott's like, did you see her lift her leg? <laughs> did you know you got to rewatch it? Her wife's like, his wife's like, you got to rewatch it. She lifted her butt cheek. Right. That's how you do it. Yeah. Well, yeah. What do you want to just shove it in the chair? No. Like, I mean, I don't, wanna, go, I don't want to smell that chair. You sit up. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. If you don't find farts funny, then you're a loser because you are choosing to have less joy in your life. <laughs> With the exact same amount of farts. <laughs> I died when I saw that. I'm like, mm-hmm. that's great. I like that. So, all right. The page of pentacles. Oh, we're at the back here. Do you want me to put my page um, of pentacles? My lotion on or my gel? What do you call that? My oh, yeah. roller ball on? Yeah. Be careful. I think this is the loose, leaky one. The loose one. It's it a little oily. Lotion. It puts the so lotion on the armpits. It's the warthog with the to-do list. Oh, good. And the feather pen. So this is sounds like something you would like. The Page of Pentacles is excited about a new venture that it could lead to great success and lots of future money. He's a dreamer, yes. But this isn't just tipsy boasting at the local dive bar. He's also a planner and a doer. Follow his lead and turn your spark of inspiration into actual, achievable steps towards your goal. While you're baby stepping, be sure to channel some of the inspired energy from the fun parts of dreaming into the not so fun parts of learning Photoshop. It could be this page is beginning a great new chapter. I love that. I know. It's absolutely perfect for everything. Yeah. So here's your here's your okay. Um, intention. OK, I magically turn my dreams into reality with the magically magical magic of to-do lists. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's perfect for me. I know. Nailed it. That's great. What a Nailed good it. start. That was a what good a start. What a good start. I mm-hmm. like that. Mm-hmm. Here's your leaky so this is, roller um, ball. But this is important. It's, it's, what is it called? This is the third chakra. It's called um, purpose. 
Okay. Solar plexus. And my favorite part is that it's located in the area of the navel and it's a prominent source of inner power and enhances our self-esteem and controls your digestion. Good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, it's a very little important. bonus there. It's very important. A little bonus. So, yeah. I like the smell of this one. Yeah, you know it's what? It's like lemony pine I salt. I didn't like it. <gasps> what are you doing? <gasps> don't look at me. How many times just, are you going to do that? God. Why just do you look. need just to do that? Eyes. Why is that the spot that you have to put it? Because that's where your no, monkey it's glams are. not. You can put it behind your ears. Now I'm uncomfortable. <laughs> now I don't like how I feel. Every time you hold them out sweaty. like that. <sighs> okay. I got to work on that in hypnotherapy. I know. You better start the show because you're running out of time. I can't. I'm ready to start the show. You're com- once you're I uncoil myself. You're mm-hmm. committed. You're committed to stopping on time. Yeah, I am. <laughs> I'm fine. I'm taking keeping track of the time. So this is what I want to talk about today. Oh, God. We got a message at the end of last year. Okay. Someone someone wrote to us. That's so nice. I like know. through the through the website? It was an email, which I'm assuming they either That's through the web- just website, I think. Contacted us at the more left podcast at gmail.com mm-hmm. or through the website. Either way, mm-hmm. I got it. So it's working. Love which it. is exciting. Okay. You know we love to hear from people mm-hmm. and you know that we're open to any and all feedback mm-hmm. for the most part. If people are rude, we just delete it. <laughs> that's not happened yet, but I'm assuming that's what would happen. Well, the, because our listeners are smart enough to know they want, still want the juice and yeah. not be kicked out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. We just boop, delete, delete, <laughs> delete, delete. <laughs> Only positive energy that's over it. here. Okay. So um, I got this message and I, I really value it. I really <laughs> think that it is super important. And it I have thought about it a couple different times since it came in. And I thought it would be important to unpack because I can only imagine that you and I have very different takes and feelings on. Am I going to have a facial reaction? You always have a facial reaction. I'm I'm saying, do I need to keep it? I think you need to just be you. (sighs) Yep. Okay. You need to be you. Do you think people would believe me if I told them that you're tame on this podcast? The people that know us. The people that know me. Okay. Yeah. Everyone else is just amazed right now to know that you're you're at like a four, four out of ten four yeah. Yeah. solid four yeah 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 that's fine that's fine i mean this is very public i try not to like right. publicly offend people right right it's, that's not my goal in life right i just truth bomb correct you, but i'm you're, keeping your own capital t truth <laughs> yes <laughs> right. but fine. i'm keeping it i keep it politically correct Maybe most of the time <laughs> <laughs> my, yes. ver- my version of yeah, politically correct. Like we said, we don't do a whole lot of editing, if any. So, well, yeah. if this person is anonymous, 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 maybe I can have. Wait, a, you got a, an email from a hippopotamus? Yeah, <laughs> maybe I can have a, a genuine reaction. Well, I'm not going to keep it together. We don't know. I don't know who okay. this person is. So technically, they're anonymous. And I really want to start by saying. I valued this message. Hmm. I really did. Okay. I don't have the actual full on message that they sent because I can only find my response to it. It's fine. I did look a couple times. That's fine. But I am a therapist. So I you can remember. Back? Of course I did. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? I just let these people go unheard. Okay, go. <laughs> you wouldn't have written back? No, you don't even know how to log into the Gmail. No, I don't even know what the website is. Yeah. All right. Exactly. All right. Go ahead. Okay. So I'm going to give you the gist of what the message was. And it was after the um, episode Girls All Done. Okay. So to take you back to Girls All Done, girl was me. Mm -hmm. All done was all set with life. Mm -hmm. Just this was too much of a year. Mm -hmm. It was not good. All the things piled on. Something had happened that morning. It was just not good. Everything Mm -hmm. was piling on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was the day I'm like, we can cancel. Yeah, Yeah. right. And I'm like, no, no, it's fine. We can still do it. And then my energy was bummer town, right? Okay. So that was a really interesting session for me because... It felt vulnerable Mm -hmm. for me to not put out my best self. I remember commenting on that episode about how my energy impacted the rest of the session. I could tell it was having a noticeable impact on you and on Scott and that I hated that my energy had that much of an impact. I love how you still call these sessions. (laughs) 
That's what they are. They're Hilarious. always a session. Okay. Well, they're always a session. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I was feeling a little nervous about that to mm-hmm. be to begin with. Mm-hmm. And then got some really positive feedback from people that were like, it was really nice to just see you be able to be authentic and wherever you were and whatever. Mm-hmm. So the just well, it, it gave other people permission to be able to not have to be on all the time. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I remember Doreen specifically writing in the Facebook group something along the lines of, you know, I've been feeling so similarly. Mm -hmm. So it allowed her in some ways to feel seen Mm -hmm. by just not feeling on. Mm -hmm. Right. Or just feeling. um, I remember saying, I feel like it just keeps getting hit by the same wave over and over and over again. Mm, That's a really good analogy. Mm -hmm. And I would stand up and then another wave would come in and Mm -hmm. I'd stand up and another wave would come in. Mm -hmm. And um, I have to say at that particular time, that was probably after, what would you say, the sixth or seventh wave had hit Mm -hmm. and things were really in a difficult spot, both personally and professionally. Mm -hmm. And we were at a crossroads that I am now happy, knock on all wood to say things are back on track. Mm -hmm. Things are in a really positive place. I've surrounded myself with wonderful people who helped turn a pretty negative situation into a really great set of opportunities. Mm -hmm. I had to trust that process. I had to trust myself through that process. Mm -hmm. But for um, a bunch of different reasons, I was not able to, nor have we been able to really go into the specifics about what was happening. Why? Because it involved some other people. Mm -hmm. It involved um, sort of a domino effect associated with, well, if I talk about this, then it might set off this, 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 and this. Mm -hmm. Um, It was one of those things that I talk about when it comes to business or when you're the supervisor and you're holding all of this information and you want to be transparent with your staff about what's happening, Mm -hmm. but it's not yet the right time to be able to do that because it could have a shock effect in a bunch of different areas. Not only that, but it also can... um inspire assumptions yes and that is never good right because once you start assuming something you then start to move in certain directions that may not be anywhere close to where be way off right right so it's it's not always great to even divulge a little bit because (laughs) assumptions are so bad right yeah. Absolutely. Even something as simple as me saying, well, things were rough in my personal life. Right. People immediately are like, Mark's not good. Something's not good with Mark. Right. Right. Again, assumptions. Or something's not great about mm-hmm. what's going on with Carter. Mm-hmm. Or, oh, I wonder if Aaron's mom is sick. Mm-hmm. Right. Like or all of these. Yeah. Or mm-hmm. if Aaron's got some health issue. Mm-hmm. Right. So it's rough. And I think this is one of the challenges of being on a podcast is that you want to be open and vulnerable and be able to share with people. And at the same time, it's still your real life and you still have to navigate that in a way where you're public, but also still need some things to be kept together and tidy Mm -hmm. before they all go out. Same thing was true when it came to the Front Row Foundation. Right. 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 And that was a very unfolding process. Mm-hmm. It was touch and go for a little while. Mm-hmm. We didn't really know there were different options, mm-hmm. right? But it mm-hmm. wasn't until further along in the process that you were able to say, because it was in a natural resting spot, right. the charity has made the decision to close, right. right? But people could have also made assumptions. Ooh, did Rebecca get canned from the charity that she'd been in? Never. That would never happen, mm-hmm. right? But. Mm-hmm. That's sort of one of the challenges associated with trying to be authentic and vulnerable and real and talk about your experience without having to also dive into things that could further hurt you Mm -hmm. potentially Mm -hmm. or other people or others. Absolutely. Unintentionally. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the things that I think we have um, done a really great job about. I would say anyone who knows us at our core knows that we're incredibly authentic and what we talk about is very real. Mm -hmm. But it might not share all of the details. And so that sets the stage for what this initial message was about. And the gist of the message was um, love you guys, love your energy, love what you guys talk about. I found myself in the Girls All Gone episode feeling annoyed because I wanted to know specifics about why Aaron specifically was having a hard time. Mm. And I found myself spending a lot of time focused on what is like wrapping myself up in what's going on for Aaron that um, I had a hard time listening to the episode. 
Mm. It then said, we always hear a lot about Rebecca's life. We know a lot about Rebecca's story. We know a lot about Rebecca's personal life, but we don't know a lot about Aaron. And then it ended by saying, we love you, Aaron, and we want to know more about you. Hmm. So that was essentially the the essence of the message. And see, I, I absolutely love it. You're going to have such different thoughts and feelings on this, which is why I want to talk about it, because this brings up so much for me in terms of empathy, in terms of understanding people, listening to people. And I want to say again, this is probably the fifth time I've said this. I value this message so much because it's going to allow us to have really beautiful conversation around people's thoughts, people's feelings. What is empathy? This is the meat Mm -hmm. of what we talk about when we talk about empathy and vulnerability. There's Mm -hmm. no way this person was the only person that felt that way. Oh, I would put money on that. Yeah. But it's okay. So hold it. That's me. Nope. That's me setting the stage. Please. Please start because oh, you'll, start? Yeah, you'll start and then I will be able to to comment. But well, I there is always going to be an initial reaction and then a sit with my initial reaction yeah. and go through the process, which is what I love about you. And your initial reaction is always the most raw and in your face. <laughs> and then after that, you're like, all right, so let me take that down a notch. And then what do I do? Mm-hmm. I sit over here like, well, let me ask a few more questions mm-hmm. and let me think about it. I don't ever have the initial. Well, I have the initial reaction, mm-hmm. but it's internal. Mm-hmm. Right. That's well, because you don't want to offend anybody. Because I'm not sure if that's really my reaction or if that's just my feelings coming up. What's the difference? Feelings for me, are an instantaneous reaction to what yeah. I experienced in that moment. Right. But getting at the, why did I really feel that way? Or why did I have that reaction for me is the heart of okay. why I was having so I just, reaction. So I just do it outwardly. Yes. Specifically when it's about yes. anything. Yes. <laughs> yeah, pretty much anything. <laughs> but you're more raw when it's about me. Or oh, if yeah. you feel that someone... Yeah. So my, my initial reaction is... A, you don't, nobody needs to know details about anything Hmm. because I'm an incredibly private person and always talk in vigs, always, even when it's sharing in a group, when you have to do those dumbass icebreakers or whatever, it's always vague. Number two, I'm not the type of person that spews my life on the social medias. It's Mm -hmm. just not a thing. Um, So when people want to know more it comes from a nosy place in my hmm. opinion mm-hmm. because that's just human nature and why do they want to know the details because there i think there's multiple reasons i think it could be because they think they can relate and they might have a very similar story and so they can learn or it makes them feel better about themselves hmm Because finally, someone that seems to have it all together or seems to be successful really isn't. And it feels really good to see that Hmm. go down. Yeah, interesting. Then the second part is, I find it interesting that they say they know a lot about me, but they don't know anything about you. I would beg that they don't know anything about me Hmm. because I haven't shared a whole lot on this podcast unless you force me to talk about it. But You are a bleeding heart. And if you listen to any of these podcasts, it's very clear. Hmm. I think you are incredibly articulate. I think that I hold the mirror up often to you so that you can reflect specifically in the cult episode. Mm -hmm. And therefore, it is, you're the most open book. Hmm. So I, it just confuses me. That's Hmm. my initial reaction. Love it. Do you have any initial reactions, Scott, that you want to throw in? Well, it's not that. Oh, <laughs> okay. It's I different. See, I see where Re- Rebecca's coming from. I don't. I'm looking at it more, more from, um, from a broadcasting point of view mm-hmm. because being in radio, I know that we would talk about things on the radio, and then we would get emails about people asking more details about it, and I think it's something that. 
anyone who is, and I mean, you could argue whether or not you're a public figure, but if you put yourself out there in any kind of broadcast, whether it's a podcast or radio or TV, you are in some forms a public figure. If anybody from the public can consume your media Mm -hmm. and people kind of, they all want to know more. They want to know more about you. They want to know all the, because they like you and they're becoming a fan. And just like, what does fan mean? Fanatic. And I'm not saying that in a negative, negative sense, but whenever you see, you know, like the Will Smith slap, what is that about? Where did that come from? What's the backstory? Is there, you know, and they want to know, is there some sort of a thing going on between Will and Chris Rock or, you know, that kind of thing. Why do they want to know? You know I, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm sure that there's somebody out there who has a scientific or a clinical reason. Like there's, they've already named it. I'm sure there is, but I've just heard of this before. It's just this desire for people who are consuming a certain person's media to want to know all there is about. They, they want all their answer, their, their questions answered. When they have questions, they want them answered, and that episode had a lot of questions there was a i had a lot of questions i i wanted to know because when we were recording that i didn't know the story you told me after Mm -hmm. so -hmm. the whole time i was like what is going on Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that was coming from just a at a personal level for me but when you're watching someone on a show you have that personal connection with them even if you don't know that person Yep. You watch, you ever watch a show and just like binge a show and then suddenly the characters are like your friends? You know, that's how people see you guys. And so they want to know, they want to know the backstory. They want to know mm-hmm. why that is. And I wish I could give you a, I mean, there's probably some sort of clinical scientific reasoning for that, that someone's developed and wrote a book by about, but... <laughs> that's well, that's how i see it it's like that desire to want to know everything there is about a person who they they watch and admire on whatever platform it is well yeah. that's why biographies are so exactly popular. memoirs mm-hmm. memoir yeah all of that and i and i and i do understand that but for me it i didn't feel like there, there was a lot of vagueness in in from my perspective i mean you could you could make a lot of assumptions but Sometimes people just have a bad day. Sometimes energies are just off and maybe there isn't a specific reason, Mm -hmm. you know, and. There's always a reason. Yeah, I don't know. I guess just because I'm a (laughs) typically a private person. That's just not where my brain goes to all the time. I don't know. I don't know. What's interesting to me is. What I'm hearing you say, Scott, is. People have a desire to connect. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then I'm hearing this listener say, I connect best through details. Right. And what I wrote back, which I will read you my, my response, which is related to this, is that it brought up the question for me about how do we connect with someone without needing to know the details? Because I think in the age of social media in the age of Will Smith slapping someone on stage, right? We all are searching desperately for the answers to the questions about why what we're seeing or hearing is the way that it is. Mm -hmm. And the hard, fast reality is that in a majority of these situations, we will never have the details. Mm -hmm. No one's calling Will Smith to ask him the questions. Oh, they're calling him. He's just not answering the phone. True. (laughs) Right. Right. Um, And the higher level of listening and empathy for me is how do you feel you can connect with someone in their moment of not feeling great or the moment that something has happened without also having to hear exactly what I mean when I say my personal, my professional life were in the dumpster a couple of months ago. Mm -hmm. So my response to this person plays directly into this. And I said, I'm really thankful that you took the time to reach out and to share your feedback about Girls All Done. It led to some really great conversations about disclosure, empathy, and vagueness, realizations that I'm hoping we will be able to share on an upcoming show, hence today. Mm -hmm. 
I'm curious if you would be willing to share more about what the additional details about my current struggles would have done for you in terms of empathy. In other words, what would the additional details have allowed you to do that not having these details didn't? Why do the details feel important? And then I basically said, if you have other thoughts, Hmm. but that for me is the crux of empathy is not diving into the deep, dark, personal details associated with what someone's experience. It's being able to witness them being in an experience and to know that you can relate on the most human of terms of what it feels like to not have your life in a great place. Right. Without, without knowing the exact reasons why right. it comes from a different place. I agree. But, but doesn't that go back to conditional versus unconditional? Because if I know your details and I'm like, you're in a dumpster fire cause you can't get your nails done anymore. And that's putting you in this place. I'm going to have a very different response than you just found out that your house is being foreclosed on. Mm-hmm. Those are two very different reactions. From you, yeah, from your point of view. Right. But that's why I'm wondering if people feel the need to know the details because they, at the end of the day, are conditional. Mm-hmm. That could that's be part of it. That's a great question. It could be part of it. It might not be the whole story or the whole answer, but that could be part of it. Some people would be like, oh, come on, give me a break. You're right. a dumpster fire because... Mm-hmm. Some, you know, because whatever. Because your stainless steel <laughs> um, dishwasher had a dent in it. Right. <laughs> but do you know right. what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. think about that, right? Because mm-hmm. they charged you an extra $50 on your ski trip. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> or your, you know, five star hotel room was a disaster case and you spent all this money. And, you know. and we see that all the time in, in, show business. Right. Where somebody goes on a, on a tirade. Look at the, uh, the, the latest one was uh, Br- Bradley Cooper, and he did mm-hmm. the show about uh, Maestro. He did the movie Maestro. Oh, yes. I saw a commercial for that. And when he, he directed that, and when he was directing that, he would not allow chairs on his set because he said chairs kill, kill the, the energy level. Mm-hmm. People, like if they know. wanted to sit down, they'd sit on Apple boxes. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> and I'm thinking to myself, being coming from that a bit of that world having made a movie and been on many sets going you pretentious prima donna piece of shit these people work hard to make this movie happen and this pos wants to take away chairs so you got to sit on apple boxes because me because when i sit on a chair it kills my energy level so nobody gets a chair like that's how that's how some of those people think mm-hmm. and it drives me crazy Mm-hmm. This is fascinating. You know what I hear? Well, I'm so thankful, Bradley, that you care enough about what's happening here that you all want us to bring our best selves forward. And if <laughs> if I need to be able to advocate to say I need to sit on a chair because I got a bad back, I hope you're going to be able to hear me when I say that that's that's what I need. Maybe you're not going to make me sit specifically on an apple crate, right? But I think what you're both talking about is the crux of one of the biggest problems that we have in the world right now is that when we are provided with details and when we have such a general desire for details in order to connect, those details are what keep us disconnected. Because the minute I hear your details about your stainless steel dishwasher or you not having a chair, I've now decided you're not worthy of my empathy, my compassion and my care anymore. That's right. And that's what people with undying levels of empathy, which, again, I'm not saying is the way to go, because I'll tell you, there's a lot of problems with this as well. (laughs) But I can tell you that when I'm constantly reserving judgment because I'm not needing to hear the details. And that is a therapeutic thing that we learn in being trained as therapists is the difference between what we call horizontal and vertical questions. So if you tell me that your dog died a vertical or a horizontal question is how old was your dog what was your dog's name um how long did you have your dog was she a rescue right they're all just superficial not getting me any deeper in the conversation detail-oriented questions a vertical question which is what all therapists are aiming to do is 
tell me the story about how you got your dog and how it integrated with your family. What was your favorite part about having a dog? How did having a dog change your relationship with so-and-so? I don't need to know the details about Fido and the fact that he was 14 when he kicked the bucket in order to feel closer to you. I need to understand what it's like to experience loss and to then take you on a journey with me to better understand what that experience felt like for you. So we have this constant desire as a society to look for purposeless, meaningless details that fuel our own ego because that's the only way we feel we get to, cr- to connect with people. And the reality is those details are what's keeping us disconnected from people because all they're doing is serving as another way to judge and another way to keep ourselves at a distance because I can't understand your experience of the stainless steel dishwasher. I can't understand Bradley Cooper's experience of what it is to be a multimillion dollar actor who is, to use Scott's terms, pretentious in his, you know, experience with chairs. Right. So Mm -hmm. for me, when I got this message, I heard this person saying, I so deeply want to connect with you more, Aaron, because I really love what you're saying on the show. And I feel like I could do that more if I knew your struggle. And I would push back on that and say, similar to what you said a couple minutes ago, listen back to the 26 episodes that we've done. And I guarantee you, you're going to know me better Mm -hmm. than anyone who hasn't listened to those 26. Mm -hmm. If you stop listening for the details Mm -hmm. and you start listening for themes, for um, energy levels when certain things come up, for reactions, it is crystal clear. Yes. Crystal clear. Right. And and even people in your life don't, who've known you for ever, ever. Mm -hmm. Don't take the time to do that. Mm -hmm. And part of that is masterfully myself. Mm -hmm. And you you do the same thing, right? So when this person says, well, we know everything we need to know about Rebecca. You're right. Because that's all I'm going to get. Because you are masterful Mm -hmm. at having people feel Mm -hmm. connected, fun. We know you pee your pants a lot. Right. And that makes me feel great because I don't pee my pants a lot. That's right. right? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, she's funny. Right. She's a spitfire. Mm-hmm. She's whatever. Yep. Right. Mm-hmm. But as we've talked about in a lot of the earlier episodes, you gave me that for the whole first however many years. Mm-hmm. And instead of saying to you, how often do you pee your pants? Mm-hmm. I said, this is so hypothetical because I never <laughs> asked you about peeing your pants. Right. <laughs> One of those vertical questions associated with, oh, my God, where, where does that come from? Oh, multiple babies. Tell me about your babies. Right. 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 And so slowly but surely, I was able to listen to you and understand you and see you Mm -hmm. in a way that was much further than those superficial, fun, over the top, quirky, extroverted details Mm -hmm. that on the surface will make people feel like you are their best friend in the entire world. And same for me. Mm -hmm. How many people would say, here's my best friend in the entire world? Yep. Right. Mm -hmm. And they could not tell you my biggest dreams right. what i hope to accomplish in this life right they couldn't tell you right mm-hmm. but that superficial energy that detail the the connecting with what we're just willing to share on the surface is enough mm-hmm. for most people mm-hmm. and what i would say is if you push it to get deeper and to understand and to listen past those details mm-hmm. you will have the most meaningful relationships of your entire life it's so true It's so true. But you have to be able Mm -hmm. to listen different. As I said in that message, what would you have been able to do or connect with me about if you had the details Mm -hmm. that you weren't able to do because you didn't have the details? Mm -hmm. Listen differently. Mm -hmm. Connect differently. And that's what I would encourage listeners to try and do and notice what's coming up for you in these relationships that you have. Mm -hmm. Because I guarantee you, if we stick on that horizontal plane, we are as superficial as they come. But true empathy and connection happens way past any of those details. Mm -hmm. That's what makes you close to people. That's what makes you inseparable from people. Mm -hmm. I think that's really that's really key. And at the end of the day, I'm still going back to healing your inner child because something happened when you were a little child, whether it be your parents say to you, stop crying. It's nothing to cry over about. Yep. Right. It's yep. it's those messages that we've heard as little t- tiny children, um, 
whether it be from your parental units or school or a coach or whoever, it doesn't matter who it's from, whatever impacted you the most formed you to be who you are today, which is the lens you view everything in. Absolutely. And you, that's really hard to change. Yes. You want the details because at the end of the day, you're asking, can I relate? That's right. Can I connect? Right. Do we understand each other? Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. you will only find your answer to those questions outside of the details mm-hmm. and in listening differently and mm-hmm. in asking yourself if it's possible to have empathy for someone who is genuinely telling you they're going through a hard time. Mm-hmm. And what does it feel like to still care about that person and feel empathy for that person without knowing one detail yeah. about how mundane right. or horrific right. their experience is? That's right. Because I can tell you there will always be a more horrific experience. Mm -hmm. And that is what keeps a lot of people from sharing the details is because they know it's going to be met with judgment Mm -hmm. about how much worse someone else might have it. That's right. That's right. All right. Here's my card to close out the show. I am happy right now. I know that I do not need to wait for 5 p.m. on Friday to be happy. Can you tell me why? Why are you happy right now? <laughs> what is it? What, what are is you it doing about? at 6 p.m.? What is it about? What's that happening? Makes you happy? <laughs> it's 6 let me, p.m. I'll tell you if it's really happiness. <laughs> <laughs> did you pee your pants today? How many times? <laughs> what did it feel like? Was it soggy? <laughs> By the way, ladies, I'm um, getting rid of the chairs in the podcast, too. You're going to have to stand for the, oh, good. <laughs> good. the podcast. Why? Excellent. Why are you getting yeah, rid why? of the chairs? Because chairs totally kill your vibe. Like oh, you yeah. need to be standing and moving around. Otherwise, <laughs> I like an apple cart, please. <laughs> no, an apple box. Apple box. You put the cart before the horse. Well, I don't know. <laughs> but first, you must eat all the apples out of it. Thanks for sticking with us. I'll say for the eight thousandth time. Please don't stop sending us emails just because we talk about them on the show. It's really great. We oh, yeah. love to talk about it. Absolutely. And where do they send an email? Oh, look, it's the more oh, podcast. Look at that. At it's already on there. Wow. Thank God we go to Rock Fox. The, Otherwise, you know, that would never be put up there. 57 minutes. <laughs> Listen, I'm only seven minutes over. It's a lot better than an hour and 16. <laughs> love you guys. Bye. Bye. I loved that. Me too. Isn't empathy amazing? Well, we're amazing. I don't know about all this empathy stuff. That's fine. I accept you wherever you are. Oh, God. I love you. I love you too. And if you love us, please like and subscribe to More Love, the Power of Empathy podcast, wherever you get your podcasts. See you next time. Bye.